Train by day, Kyle Wigginton podcast by night, all day. All right, Chris Sparks. Know, yeah, yeah, what's up, buddy? Um, so I actually showed up that night hoping to... Uh, yeah, what were you here that night for? Dude, I thought I was going to get uh, a set in for uh Was that Thursday? The stand-up. Yeah, so I okay. showed up on the music open night, mm-hmm. open mic, open night. Which I we don't up. care if you do a comedy set during that too, See, but it's just like, it's kind of weird for well, everyone here because exactly. they can listen yeah. to music. Yeah. So I, I've, I was already going around uh, workshopping uh, the one-man show, uh, Thank Me For My Service, A Veterans Cry For Help. I guess we should probably get that out of the way. We can get it out of the way a few times, actually. Yeah, so... Um, so, I mean, explain what that so, is. Yeah, so so um, I wrote a one-man show, uh, and it kind of highlights the... Uh, this is a comedy show. It's... There are funny parts, but there are also like parts of it that aren't funny, mm-hmm. right? And it has to do with my struggles in the system as a veteran and trying to have a voice in my care, but in the mental health system, my experience has been once that I've asked for that help, I've lost my voice completely. What do you mean? Um, Can you an example? Like yeah, who are you sure. asking? Sure. So um, I... Have been going to therapy and like uh it's like a military therapy or something was no, that no actually i went i got i got retired um medically from the army so that meant i kept my medical insurance like through tricare mm-hmm. so that allows me to see anybody i want to i don't have That's to cool. go through the va which is ideal mm-hmm. um but i so I, I did that i went through Oshner thinking like the va sucks right because that's what you that's what you hear um so I've been going, I've been seeing, actually, I've been going to Oshner for my like physical injuries um, that I suffered um, in, in my service. And then I started talking to my primary care guy, who's awesome. Uh, and he was kind of like, well, maybe you're not having attention issues due to like ADHD or whatever. Maybe you're just depressed. Mm. And I was like, okay, that's a possibility. Like, I'm open to that. Because I, at that point, I could recognize that I wasn't well. Something was off. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and so he was, after we like tried a different, few different stimulants and whatnot. And I'm like, ah, it just seems like I'm distracted faster. Mm-hmm. He said, well, it sounds like you might be depressed. So I'll refer you out to someone if you're up for it. And I was like, hell yeah. So, um, it's been a year now since I've been seeing my talk therapist um, at Oshner who, has been like really helpful. Um, I've found talk therapy to be the most helpful thing for me anyway, in my experience. Um, But then once we started introducing medicine into the equation, things changed a lot. Uh, For the worse? I mean, in my experience, yeah. yeah. So like I'm basically just trying to figure out which medications I need and which ones I don't. Because I'm not trying to just solve a, you know, put a Band-Aid on with a pill or anything like that. Yeah, you're trying to get to the bottom of the problem. Yeah, exactly. So it's really easy for people to look at my VA jacket and see that I have had a traumatic brain injury. Um, I, I had a, an airborne incident, so I, I hit the ground like too fucking hard. Mm-hmm. Um so it's really easy to look at that stuff and say like, oh, this is why you feel this way and ignore all the like childhood trauma that I endure that we all endure um, and blame that on the service and then want to have this acute window of, oh, we're going to attack this issue, your PTSD due to your fall and all this stuff. Um, and I'm trying to say like, I don't know that that's the most pertinent issue. Yeah. Um, and so their solution has kind of been to medicate me. Which I think is what they probably try to do to everyone, right? Yeah. They try to I give you a pill Western and send medicine, you home. Yeah, yeah, that's Western medicine in general. And then um, the the doc that I've created as a result of my experience in this system is about just that, how Western medicine, just the easy answer, because there's so many of us seeking help now. Mm-hmm. We have to just write prescriptions. We don't have time. We don't have time to get to your shit. That's a good point. You know, um, I've got to see 12 patients today. So you got 30 minutes, bro. Get to it. And that's kind of how I think that's a result of putting capitalism in front of everything else. Um, And so like even with the doc, like it's not. I'm not being political or anything. It's really lit. You're you're going through my experience as I'm going through it. Because I don't like, I I don't feel good about what's happening as it's happening. Um, So I just like instinctively started recording myself 
um, in uh, at the old 77 on Chop um, because I, I checked in. I guess we'll get into our conversation we had the other yeah. night. So no, people need to know these yeah, things. Yeah, so I checked into the hotel um, with the goal of filing the copyright um, to the one man show so that I could pitch it and take meetings and talk to people like you, like whoever, and not have to worry about them going and like producing my show and then whatever. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I just I've been eating shit too long to have somebody you know, take my story and do anything to it that's not authentically who I am. Yeah, it's a real concern as a creator that most people don't really think about, but someone yeah. can take your work and, yeah, and then it, you're, you're if fucked. You haven't filed it, yeah, if there's, I mean, so I was going around workshopping the one-man show um, at comedy clubs, um, and it was like, I'd have to, like, put a disclaimer out front, like, hey, dude, this is, like, I'm about to tell a story from Act 2, and it's not, what you think it's going to be, but just like, I appreciate you all paying attention and being here, whatever. Um, and like some shows I'll get off and like people be like, Hey, you don't have to explain that shit. But it's like, yeah, dude, like I'm not going to leave people in the lurch that are here to laugh and like do all this shit. And I'm about to do five minutes of nothing funny. Right. Um, so I checked into the hotel trying to file the, uh, a group copyright, on copyright.gov for the one man show and like everything that I thought would come of it, what everything that I'm going to make off of it at that point. Like I had also kind of thought like, Oh, if I have enough, if I get enough content in this process, like I'll make a documentary, Mm -hmm. but I didn't know at the time, like whether or not that was actually going to happen. Um, so I check in the hotel cause I'm just there to like work. I just want to be free of everybody else's, uh, phone calls. Like, and I'm as a veteran, like, when you're going through it, you know, everybody, everybody cares. Like everybody wants to help. Everybody's concerned. Um, but it's like, it's just the thing to be is to be concerned about veterans. Right. Like it's, it's an easy shoe to wear to be like, Oh, if you need anything, like just reach out. But what does that really mean? Exactly. That's a lot of people these days when, when they're dealing with problems, because they don't know how to handle their own problems. So it's like, how am I going to handle someone else? So they're just like, I'll help. I'm there. I'm there. But it's really a standoffish. So that's exactly the point with the documentary that I'm making Mm -hmm. is that everyone just keeps asking me how they can help. And my answer every time is I just need space, dude. Yeah. I literally just need the space to be who I am. And like, just give me like a couple days and we're good. Like we're back in it. Um, but everybody kind of like, no one trusted me, right? Like nobody trusted me cause I left everything. Mm. Um, and it's because I like I've before that, like I've been having my, like my physical health has gotten worse over time. Um, and I've just kind of like, I've been going, having ER visits for migraines and shit. Like, uh, I'm going to see neurologists who can't who say that they don't have any answers for me, but like, I feel like I'm being very articulate with what my experience is. And it seems like it shouldn't be that difficult of a task, um, to pinpoint why I'm having migraines when you know, I have a history of concussions, like all all this, all this stuff. It's just frustrating to go through that system from a physical aspect and not feel like it's helping Mm -hmm. or you're not getting any relief. And then I flipped right into the mental health aspect of it. And then things just continue to go downhill and like, uh, the point that I make throughout the documentary too is that like I'm not upset with my psychiatrist. Like you're gonna see me speak to her in a way that you don't see patients speak to their psychiatrist. But like I was a human intelligence collector in the army, so you're not just gonna like say some shit at me and then have me walk out of your office and just keep taking the shit that you keep writing for me when I know that I'm not feeling better. I'm just feeling different because you gave me a different medication today. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the documentary, um, I end up like filming my appointment with my psychiatrist to show my experience. Cause like she's making me feel over the phone and stuff. Like I am being so manic and I am just trying to articulate what I need from everyone. And it's space to be in a hotel room and to work and to workshop this show when it's hard, you know, it's like, it's not easy to go up on stage and, and tell those stories knowing that I'm not going to get a laugh. Mm -hmm. Like this is an hour long show that I'm giving you five minutes of, it's not going to be what you want it to be. And I know that, but I still have to work. You got to practice it. Exactly. Sorry, but it is what it is. Um, so that's all I was asking for. Um, and everyone kind of gave the exact opposite of that and just kept calling me 
I had, I was forced to go into my psychiatrist's office as a result of my mom calling her and, and telling her that like she was concerned about me. But when that ha- that the day before that my mom called her, I had just had a therapy appointment with my talk therapist mm. in which we did get into it more so than usual. So like she did have something to contribute as far as like, yeah, he was a little bit uh, frustrated yesterday. So that kind of fed into this whole idea that I'm well, gravely a, disabled. Their appointments over the phone too? They're calling me, right? right? So I'm in this hotel room to not be bothered. Yeah. And now everybody's calling me. My well, that's mom's a bad way to me. communicate the too. psychiatrist is calling me. You know? Oshner's calling me. Right. And, and you can't, and that's her point in the phone calls in which I, I don't have them. I, I mean, I'm going to get the phone calls and I'm, I'm negotiating my own settlement with Oshner right now as it relates to everything that you see in the documentary. And like the documentary is not even the whole story. It just got to a point where like I could not continue to document everything and seek help. Right. Like it's just like overwhelming. Um, no, it's impressive that you got as much as you did going through all that stuff. Yeah, and, and that's what I, it's so like I'm working with like Oshner's compliance department and stuff like that. And they're like, you know, we're so sorry that you had to deal with this and that you went through this and stuff. And I have to tell them like, yo, you're lucky I am who I am. Mm-hmm. Like anybody else, it would have broke them. Um, cause like, so eventually I ended up doing six days in a mental health facility because my, after the, uh, the last scene in the film, um, it's like I have to stop recording because I'm about to call my aunt to let her know like where we're going from this point. And uh, so the footage stops, but I essentially am forced after that appointment to rehire my psychiatrist so that she can prescribe me mood stabilizers like she wants to. And I'll whatever, I'll take them if that's what you really think. Because I know in my ADHD in my like manic states that like I know when I get there and there are points where I get to where I I'm, I'm cool on that. Like I'm ready to tap out now, mm-hmm. but there are also ways that I can tap in and out of that through meditation, through deep breathing, through whatever that like I'm cool. So just because you caught me on a like passionate rant doesn't mean that you should be worried about me. Right. Like, and that's kind of where everybody went to. But I've always been this person my entire life. I've always been a storyteller. I've always um, like paid attention more than everybody else. I've always retained memories. Like, and I'm realizing after, you know, they say once you hit 30, like you have that moment of clarity. And like, that's been mine is that like, there's a reason I can remember this shit so well. Mm. Someone's got to tell these stories. Someone's got to share this experience. Yeah. And so, um, like while I'm making the doc, it's kind of like I'm looking at myself like if anybody's going to do it, it's it's going to be you. And there's like, you know, there's a reason all this is happening. It can't be I'm just not going to just eat shit, not be heard, have to go through the system, fight for my own voice throughout and just have people look at me and say, I don't understand what you're going through. And it's like, bro, if you would just ask me a couple of follow-up questions, we could probably get there. Yeah. You well, I, I, so I have a bunch of friends that also went to the military mm-hmm. and they love listening to these stories because it confirms what they actually know too. Yeah. So, I mean, the fact that you're making these things, I think it's something that society, people like me who've never been into that situation, mm-hmm. we, we don't know. But like when you're telling your story and stuff like this, I think the word needs to get out there. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's generally the feedback that I've gotten is that like, if you, know a veteran and you like love a veteran like it's not an easy watch um it's 84 minutes of runtime and it's like you go through a lot of things with me as i go through it Mm -hmm. so yeah i get lost in the hospital because i got dropped off and i didn't go in the door that i usually go in every week Mm -hmm. and i don't cut that you know like i i literally tell you i'm about to go fire my psychiatrist walk in the door realize i'm lost Mm. (laughs) you know like i'm the most confident person i open the door and go oh shit I don't even know where I'm at. Yeah. You know? Um, and I just think that's like, that's a human concept. And right. I, I think that mostly what I want people to pull from this film is that like, we're all dealing with something mm-hmm. and you can't help anybody else until you've dealt with your own shit. So like any help you have to offer when you're not okay is always going to be self-serving every single time. And that's like, that's with good intentions, right? And, and I'm trying to express throughout this film that like I'm releasing everyone of that expectation. I don't need that. We don't need that. Mm-hmm. We just need the space to be who we are separate from our service. 
because once we're out, it's so easy to be like, oh, he's in the army. So, you know, they write you off. And then everybody knows your whole story. Yeah. That's just not true. But we do a bad job as veterans and as service members of like keeping up this facade, this charade that like we're all badasses and we're not a bunch of fucking nerds who gavin our toothbrushes. Well, I don't think, I think war is terrible anyway. And I think well, everyone would, uh, yeah. they would agree. So, so, I mean, the fact that we're even doing this shit still is beyond me. Right. And, and I mean, we're seeing now, we're never going to see World War II type uh, combat ever again. Like we're seeing proxy wars. And yeah. This is, this is how it's going to go from here on out because we can influence in different ways before it was just brute strength. Mm -hmm. Um, so we still use that influence. It's just not sacrificing men and women anymore. Yeah. But we're, we're we're so close to like, we're not even removed from that to say that we stopped doing that is not true. Um, but uh, the point I make, um, in some of the monologues and the point that I'm making in the one man show is that, we've been around for 250 years, dude. And we've been doing that our entire existence. So the idea that you or I aren't born with the inclination to flip that switch, like you're born with that. Now there's no, what way. do you mean? Throughout American history, we've always wrestled with the idea as men and women. Now that at some point you could be called to go to somebody else's country and murder with moral license and feel, and people are going to pump you up over that shit. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Yeah, I, it never clicked with me. Yeah. Like, I was like, if you tell me to go kill someone, I'm just going to be like, no, well, throw me in jail. I'll go read. Well, part of like the training and the indoctrination is like, one of the points that I make is like, the they only, tell you to the serve only, your country. Yeah, right? Well, the only difference between somebody in day one of basic training and day 65 army wise is that like, you just have enough responsibility to get somebody else killed. Now. Oh, well, I just meant like in high school. Cause I feel like yeah. that shit starts when you were yeah, in high well, school. Yeah, it yeah. starts. Or, I mean, you see kids at parades with flags and stuff yeah. and they, they don't, they're, they're misled into believing they know what service is by the time they're old enough to sign a contract. Mm-hmm. And then they find out that none of that's true. Yeah. And you're, you're on a contract. So what are you going to do? Um, some people quit. Um, that's a much more common thing than like anybody talks about. Mm-hmm. Um, but I get it. Like one of the things what do they that do makes if you quit? us, you, so like basically you, uh, it's like a dishonorable discharge or something? No, it's um, it's a general discharge. It's like a failure to adapt. Failure to adapt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's, that's usually the classification. Um, and so, but it'll be like guys, like I knew a guy um, who was, he was, a, he was like a PhD candidate. He ran like a 1035 two mile. Mm-hmm. This dude was a stud. He got a hernia and uh, they wanted him to just hang out for three months, like have the hernia fixed whatever hang out in this shitty environment continue to not have your phone continue to like just eat shit while you recover not at home (laughs) not with anybody you know Mm -hmm. and so he got a hernia and he was like no uh, no i'd rather not you know um yeah i know that um when i was in in high school they would come in i think we were like 16 or something military would and they would do these tests yeah the ass is that what it is Yeah, Yeah. yeah yeah so that's really how they, and, and uh, I don't even like the way that's set up, right? So they, they come into your high school and then they, they, they tell you about this, all this opportunity yeah. that you're going to have. Um, and that's true, right? That is true. Like blank statement, that's a true statement. It will give you the many opportunity, opportunities. Right? But just not opportunity for, to do shit you want to do. I mean, I wouldn't even say, that, like you can, it just really depends. Everyone's experience is their own. And I think that's another thing that we don't talk about enough as veterans is that like, just be like, well, first of all, people who go, who have been on like four tours, right. And are just like these barrel chested, like tear the door down kind of guys. They got it, bro. Like, yeah, that sucks. All right. I don't care who you are. You go four times, bro. That shit sucks. But it also sucks to go zero times because you don't have any control over that. Like there's a handful of guys who can say, yes, yeah, in me. And they'll send you. That's not this idea that you're going to join and like volunteer for war and shit is, is in movies. What was that? There was a movie. It was about, um, the guy who played Hawkeye was the guy in it. Oh yeah. The he PLD like, movie? he just kept going Her back. Locker. Yeah. 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 See like maybe if you're a badass EOD dude, yeah, you can, they need you. But like he wanted that. Yeah. And there are guys like that. You know what I mean? And they're, they're a different breed. They really are. But what happens is once you, sign a contract you're now a different breed Mm. that's just not true dude 
you're the same fucked up kid you were 65 days ago. You just got a nice ass uniform on now. Yeah. They've now trained us to compartmentalize so much that if you have to, you could go and do the shit that you didn't want to do. That's what those 65 days are. Mm. It's compartmentalization training. We're going to fuck you up so much, throw so much information at you that you're just going to have to figure out how to shut down all your emotions and do what the fuck it is you need to do. Mm -hmm. That's all service is at every level. Public service, nurses, doctors, police officers, public attorneys. Yeah, anything. Uh, you're, you're indoctrinated in high school, and if yep. that doesn't stick, then they send you to the military, yeah. and you get deeper indoctrination. If that doesn't yeah. work, they send you to a correction Servitude facility. over uh, everything else. Yeah, they'll send you to a um, a, a prison mm -hmm. where you get uh, pushed into compliance right. more. You have, yeah, yeah you, have, you have two options. You can either eat shit, or you can... Blend in? Blend in. I don't know. I guess you have three Be options. subservient? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can eat <laughs> shit, you can blend in, or you can go to jail. Yeah. Like, that's American culture, to me, in, in my experience. Like, I don't want to... It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So that's that's basically the gist of the of the doc. You get to see, like, my experience. Um, and then the one-man show is me kind of expanding on all of these issues with, like, more theater. And um, it's, it's a fun thing. I don't know how to... It's it's done. I don't know how. I'm trying to figure out how to talk about it without like giving the one man show stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know you have the the doc uh, finished. I didn't know you yeah. had the one man show finished too. Yeah, it's done. Um, so like, are you planning on filming that as well? Yeah, I'm gonna film it. Um, I'm planning on doing a show in Baton Rouge that I'm gonna film. Mm -hmm. um, put that out. But really, like at this point, the doc is kind of like an 84 minute trailer for mm -hmm. for the one man show because like you don't know the doc ends and like, you don't know what happens. Like, it's not a, like I said, it's not a feel good watch. It's not like there's no resolution at all. Cause I'm still going through it, you know? Yeah. Um, I made, I finished this shit on August 13th. Yeah. It's a very recent thing. Yeah. Um, I finished on August 13th and was submitting to festivals on the 17th. How was your experience at the festival? It was weird. Like I, I'm finding out that like, I don't know shit about this circuit. This is the first time you've been to a film festival? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, yeah. They're different. So it was like a monthly thing, mm. which I didn't realize. Like they're doing this big, I'm in the big one in, over the summer. But mm. like my stupid ass went out there and was like, oh, I'm about to like meet people and stuff. And there were like people out there, but it, they're like, they're kind of talking to you like you just joined a club. Mm. And they're like, if you do all the right things, little boy, you're going to make it in this industry. That kind of shit. I hate so, that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, okay, like I know what I have. I know what this is. Like I don't need encouragement. Yeah. I need logistical advice. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of those people that, that go to those all the time, it's like they just, they don't ever even get their projects finished because it's hard to make a film. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, a lot of these people, they're just there to like have that community. For sure. For sure. And that's what are like. I'm done and I have no, I feels like I have no community. So yeah. like I've, I've figured out like, uh, like I had one review that was, that was like just spot on this dude named, uh, Dante with, a uh, Oh man, I don't want to get it wrong. One eye film festival. It's an independent film festival, obviously. And he, he just spoke to like the, the cumbersomeness of the film and like how hard it is to get through it. Mm -hmm. And that was his, uh, like critique is that like, it's not, it's not given a filmmaker's kiss at all. Right. Like it's just this rough cut that you just kind of have to bear through. And my intention with that cut was this is, this is in chronological order. My experience in this hotel room and in my doctor's offices as it's happening. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's fucking cumbersome, but he got that. And he like put that in the review, like uh, this, I can't help but think that this is intentional. And like, I'd never spoken to this dude in my life. Mm -hmm. So I was like, holy shit. Like, yeah, exactly. Um, and then after that, that was probably on, that was around the first of the month or whatever. And that just gave me like a new motivation to go in and, and re-edit it and kind of cut it up and make it arc a bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, so but at least I you're have, thinking about it that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have two different and you're able to go back now. and adjust. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and that's what I'm kind of like. When I did, when I first made this thing, I was like, just work, 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 trying to figure out like, you know, where do I cut the scene? Where do I jump into this one? Do I put this for like all that? Probably kind just trying of shit. to figure out the the program. Exactly. Right? Oh my god, dude. Let me tell you, I downloaded iMovie, mm -hmm. but I didn't even know it wasn't on my laptop. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just going to be there. Yeah. And then I had to download it. I had to look up a YouTube video real quick, and then I made it. Like yeah. literally like that in my hotel room and like the point 
that I'm on my YouTube channel. I have like a bunch of videos from the process of me making the documentary. And like, while I'm, I'm also like workshopping the one man and stuff and doing sets. Like you don't, you, I have, I think I do have one video of me doing one story from the one man show, but it's like, uh, I'm just trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And my point is that like, once I gave myself the space to be creative and to do all of that, like everything just kind of fell in my lap simultaneously everybody's freaking out Mm -hmm. about my mental health and I feel so good and that sounds manicky right maybe it is sounds like a creative to me and and so like so since then I've I've gotten a new psychiatrist who is a not a PA but an actual psychiatrist within Austin's system who basically said exactly that he's like nah dude you're good like I hear you dude I'm a nightmare when I'm creating something trust me like I that's why I told so right now I'm working on a new film as well Mm. And I told the people that they're at the bar, I'm like, dude, I'm going to be checked out for at least the next two to yeah. three weeks. Don't so if you, if you come at me with some mm-hmm. shit like there's mm-hmm. a pipe clogged, I'm going to be like, get the fuck out of my face. Yes. Go get some Drano. Yeah, OK, because yeah. like I, I got when you're in that zone and you're like focused, hyper focused mm-hmm. on these things. I don't got no. Time no, for there's I don't need go go fix a, mm-hmm. a clogged pipe yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that's that was my point throughout that I was trying to make on the phone with my psychiatrist. Like she basically forced me to come in. And like prove to her that I was okay. Mm. And so I decided before I went in, I was like, no, dude, like I'm here to be okay. And now you're in the way. So like you cannot help me. Like uh, if this is your plan of care, you're, you're inconveniencing me now because you don't feel good about what I'm doing. And that's right. wild. Yeah. I feel like those, those guys, they're trained to see negative so yeah. in every situation, when someone comes in, they're at least they're going to be like, okay, something's wrong with you. That's mm-hmm. that's the wrong. Yeah. that's full, the wrong thing to stop. take. Once yeah. you walk in the door, you're wrong. Something's yeah. wrong with something's you. Something's going on. We yeah, and it's like you shouldn't it. take that. Yeah, I think one of the big problems that we're actually getting into here is that our society isn't set up for creatives. No, it's not. That if, if you're creative, like you're you are literally, they're going to medicate you because they're yes. going to tell you something's wrong with you. And yeah. it's like, no, I just if see you doing anything to make other people around you uncomfortable. You're the problem. And when you're a creative and you're around people who think logistically, none of that shit makes any sense to them. Yeah. So when I'm going off about, I've always known who I am. When you're connecting dots. It's done. Yeah. Like, like I, and I tell my psychiatrist in the film while I'm recording, I say like, I, I can do this shit in four days because it's not, I don't have to, it's not content that I'm creating, dude. This is my story. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're not going to let me tell that, like, what the fuck are we all doing here? Yeah. Honestly. Now, I think more people should develop that attitude, too. They should start telling their stories. Because, I mean, so many people are scared nowadays they're going to get canceled and stuff. They end up holding right. all this stuff inside. They don't yeah, let it out. for sure. Well, I think Dave Chappelle does the best job. Oh, they're there. amazing. Dave Chappelle, Bill Burr, uh, yeah, Rogan's yeah, pretty yeah. good at it, too. Like, There's- we ha- like, if comedy is not allowed to push that boundary, then we don't have comedy anymore. It's not comedy. If you have to be safe, you're not doing comedy. And the idea that we expect that of comics now, because somebody like you're supposed to be offended. If somebody's not offended by the joke, it's not you shouldn't tell it. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, those guys they always say they have f you money. That's true. That's so it's, it sucks that you like can't do uh, it coming up. I see what you're right. saying. Right, and yeah, that's yeah. that's the bad thing about yeah. it too. I think you should be able to yeah. do it coming up. I think up. I'm going to do it coming up. Go for it. We have uh, <laughs> one of the one of the DJs um, that came in here on a podcast one time. He's fucking blowing up because he gets on stage and he's like, "Suck my dick," oh my you know, God. "Eat fucking pussy," like oh, hey, whatever he wants to say, just comes yeah, out of his yeah. mouth and people love it. Yeah, they're like cheering yeah, him I on. Mean, if you're there to entertain, right? Yeah, like, and people love it, like give it to him. Give it to them, dude. As long as you can stay like within yourself in in your creativity, and you're not like doing shit to satisfy somebody else. Like that's whatever I that's what I tell everybody is that like if you sit down to write and you already know what it is, it's probably bad. Mm. It's probably bad. You should be writing in a like non judgmental way and just collecting, and then something will happen. Like to sit down and set the standard that you're about to write a masterpiece is a fucking trap yeah it was um i forgot what book it is but it talks about the muse like the muse taking is it the you. artist's way it might be the artist's way we're talking about like catching so the muse good. and letting the muse just flow through you it yeah i think um so the art like i the artist's way is what kind of like got me in that mindset of like being not uh, um non-judgmental about my work mm-hmm. is because i used to sit down to write and be like oh i'm about to write a 12 minute set now 
That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, for me, dude, I just I sit down and I, I do a thing called word vomit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where I just literally sit down and just let it go. And then later I'll go mm-hmm. back and look at it again. Like so, I have several scripts on my yeah. computer right now that I just need to go back and dude, rework. That's that's how I write too, except I, I longhand everything and then I don't go back to it. I never go back to it. I have to recreate it in my mind if I want to use it. Yeah. And usually it's better. The That's, second time, third time around. Who else was telling me they were writing a script by hand the other day? And I was like, you're fucking crazy. Like, how do you... I don't write... So what I'll do is like, I. it is free writing, right? I'm not writing. I'm not formatting. I'm not doing okay, anything. Okay. That's why I thought it was yeah, a format no, thing. No, I was no. like, what in the hell? You're no, writing a script in the format I mean, by hand? I mean, writing a script is easy, right? Tab, tab, whatever. Well, you no, there's I mean? a program that makes it way that, easier than yeah, that yeah, too. I yeah. mean, I'm on that program. Cell text? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, no, I'm on... Uh, What's the other one that's better than it's like first final, draft? First draft, I'm on yeah. First draft, okay. first draft is like I look like Jordan Peele out the box. I like my right? cell text. Yeah, yeah. See, and that's one of those like either you like you're a tab guy or an inner guy, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever the code shit is. And tab it's like slash the same inner. Thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's how I've been writing. That's the way that I've found to write and it be easier. I've written scripts where I'm like, I know exactly what this is. I know where this plot's going. Like. And it's, just, it's always been harder that way for me right? to try and like live up to the expectation in my own head before I even put shit down. That's crazy. That's, you just, you'll never get out of your own way like that. You're talking about scripts, like screenplays? Any writing. What? But so, especially screenplays. If you have, if you have a vision, that's one thing, right? Well, no, I was going to ask you, I was like, Some do people you... jump into scripts before they jump into storyboards and like. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Cards. You know what I mean? Like start, people put too much. They want the fat script, dude. See, for me. I like to get the story down Mm -hmm. and then I'll go back and put my creative twist on it as a filmmaker. I see. So the one I'm working on right now is a time travel piece. Mm. Um, and you could do cut scenes wherever. Well, the stories, I want to, I want to use my visual expects my visual effects experience on this film to like Mm -hmm. showcase everything I've been doing for the past 10 years. So the time travel piece, uh, they're going through, uh, portals and things like that. But I was, I was, I had the story down the first draft and that was my word vomit, my word vomit script. But now I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at visually mm-hmm. what I can How do can for this story on. to actually make it more appealing yeah. than just to have the, the word vomit mm-hmm. script. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's the that's part two of filmmaking, mm-hmm. right? You can write a good script, but like if you can't put it out in a way that does that script justice, then like you just kind of shit on the script anyway. Yeah. God, it's like a big puzzle, man, making a movie. Oh, oh see, it's like, I love so, it. so this is the first film that I've ever, like, actually, so I've, I made, like, home movie. like, I say it throughout, like, I've always been this guy, but I've never been allowed the space to, like, pursue it. Mm-hmm. So my whole point is, like, hey, watch me go do whatever I want, fuck off, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, outside of home movies and shit when I was a kid, like, literally directing, create, like, the whole thing from scratch with, like, two dudes that I hang out with on the regular. Mm-hmm. Um and making people laugh at like a young age was something that I like was addicted to. But then you don't, there's no value in that as an adult. Right. So, uh, society tells you to go get a job and go join the army or go do whatever. Make money. Do that shit. Yeah. Like take care of your family. Yeah. Um, and like you, 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 you have to, but I think like American society now, like we're putting ourselves in a position to make it really hard. Um, and we're ignoring problems that, can't really be ignored anymore because of Twitter, because of social media, because of TikTok. Like all these things are being brought up and pointed out and flawed and and, and those things. And so I think we're at a really important time in American culture where we can actually write it versus whitewashing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If you ever have any um, any desire to like dive deeper into the editing stuff, I've been. Uh, Dude, I would love to sit down with you whenever. Yeah. And, and well, we have because I'm not. I'm. I very much like my shit. When you see it, dude, you're gonna be like, "This guy's never made a movie before." Well, I've watched a little bit of it the other yeah. day. I watched the trailer and stuff, yeah. or you sent mm-hmm. me a little cut. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, no one of one of my uh, cousins. He his name is his name is Valor Gaming. He's okay. a streamer online. Yeah. So here lately, I've been jumping into his Discord server, mm. and we've been uh, streaming our, our live uh, edits back and forth. Mm. So I mean, anyone who wants to get on there, I've been teaching him how to edit okay. his stuff. So yeah, I've been yeah, doing, yeah. yeah. So next time we jump, we jump yeah, in, I'll send you the, the link, dude. yeah, I'll send you the link. You can jump in and watch us too. Yeah, yeah, because I I the only thing I looked up, I watched the YouTube video on how to use iMovie long enough to figure out how to split a clip. So we use and Adobe. So like all the Adobe apps on there, yeah. like the Adobe Audition is what we're using today to record. Okay. Um, Adobe After Effects is what he's learning right now. So I'm teaching him all this because I know how to use all the softwares. 
So I've um Premiere Pro is what you need for uh film for to edit your film. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, see like I literally hopped on iMovie, like click mm-hmm. on the clip and then hit the like auto edit and then we're good. See, I've never used iMovie. Yeah, so I was it was easy. It, mm-hmm. it wasn't all difficult. It's not like I say like, oh I got on there and told myself how it wasn't fucking hard. But yeah. like there's a lot more to it that I don't even yeah. I haven't even tapped into. Like you can do a lot on it. But I was looking for something that I could just like drag and drop. Yeah. And it wasn't that. And so I was like, oh, fuck. Now I got to like, I got to, re- the problem with the puzzle is retaining what you want to do while working out the kinks of the technology. Yeah. It's a good, because you have an idea and it's like, fuck, I'm going to lose this if this doesn't load right now. So we were, we were talking about this yesterday because we were on yesterday doing a stream where we were editing his new logos for his, um, for his, his yeah. gaming stuff. I don't even have a logo yet, dude. We can get you, we can get yeah. you one, mate. <laughs> and he can actually make you one in 3, 3D space. So I'm teaching sick. right now, 3D space yeah. logos. Um, but he was like, are we going to start from scratch? And I was like, well, we can do one from scratch, but think about all the processing yes. power we're going to have to use to make mm-hmm. one from scratch. Mm-hmm. The best thing to do is to get on Fiverr or find someone who's made one mm-hmm. and we use what they did and, and make our own concept. Because you own it now. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, they, we don't use their actual logo. We just look at what they did and we recreate oh, it. Yeah, yeah. And that's what everybody on yeah. Fiverr is doing anyway. Let's be real about Some all of those, those guys are fucking good, dude. Amazing. Yeah. Right. And some of them are not. Right. Some of like a lot of the ones that you see that are affordable are just like a cartoonization of a picture that yeah. you're going to send them anyway. So you could pay them $45 to put an edit on a picture that's yours in the first place. And you could have probably downloaded the software they used to do it. So that's what. So the other day, one of his uh, streamer buddies, they wanted a new logo and he asked me how much I would charge. And I told him my price because like my time is limited now yes. and it yeah. takes a lot of time to do those right. things. And he's like, um, he's like, that guy doesn't want to pay that much money. And I was like, well, then I'm not going to do it right. for him. Yeah, I'm not the guy. Yeah. And I said, but I will sit down and teach you how to do it. If you want to drop your price down, mm-hmm. you want to do it for yourself. So mm-hmm. that's what we've been doing. I've been teaching him how to make oh, nice. that, how to work the logo and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, that takes away from, like off of your load too. You can yeah. No, whatever you I can send work to him. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And be like, dude, give me 25 bucks off this. Yeah. Oh yeah. Finder's fee. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm willing to do that. I'll teach anyone anything. That's what. We had uh, one of the, you know, Pickle, right? The comedian that does our open mics. Bro, I don't know anybody. Okay, so <laughs> Pickle is the one that hosts our open mics. And um, it was him and another girl. They were doing podcasts here mm. before, too. And I told him, I said, look, you guys can come in. You can use all this equipment, but I'm not going to edit it for you. Mm-hmm. So I said, once you finish the podcast, you take the files that I give you. Mm-hmm. Go home and uh, download yeah, Premiere Pro. And I think it's like 10, 15 bucks a month or something like that. So you can, mm-hmm. you can buy it for a year for a hundred something, about 150 bucks. And I said, I'll teach you how to use the software and then you edit your own stuff. Mm-hmm. So I said, I'm willing to teach you the skill and let you use our equipment. And, uh, you know, that quickly falls off like pickled. I'm proud of them cause they're still doing it in a studio. They picked up, a, oh, got I got picked up by a studio. Oh, cool. Which you is, were telling me that last dude, time we spoke. Yeah. Yeah. They're That's huge. It's massive, man. Like their their space is so awesome. Oh, like we cool. need to get just having a space is so important, man. Like yeah. it gets looked over. Like these people who are making shit in like closets and stuff, bro. Like hats off because that shit is hard. Yeah, we um whenever what do you use um you, are you gonna be here around Tuesday mm-hmm. for open mic? Okay, mm-hmm. I'll introduce yeah, I'll, you. To, I'll, I'll 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 be here Tuesday. I'll introduce you to pickle and I'll see if okay. we can get you guys set up on his podcast. Yeah, so yeah, you can promote cool. your stuff on his podcast too. That's perfect. Yeah, I'll do a real set. Tuesday also to like yeah the my so what I've been doing is just like going around to these open mics and I'm just kind of like being like no I'm not doing what you want me to do I'm working on my show and it, like some nights <laughs> people are just like what the fuck was that and then some nights are like people are like we're coming to your show but that's what an open mic's for an open yeah, mic exactly. is for practice all right so all right, I had an it. issue with one local bar oh I bet mean, I know which one it is you know which one it is yeah you don't have to say and it. everyone has issues this way yeah, yeah. yeah so People get kicked out of that fucking place. I got asked not to come back. Okay. Yeah. So um, <laughs> There's I, was several. Told, I was told maybe you should find another mic. And then my response was <laughs> maybe you're right. Um, but I I basically, I signed up last. All right. Because I know, first of all, if you're allowing 25 guys to get up on, guys and girls to get up on stage, you're doing too much. Like, nah, dude, 15, I want five minutes. Yeah. Like, I can't do anything with three minutes. But I get it. You're trying to keep the show, like if you tell people no, then they're not coming back. Right. I get it. But when I sign up last with the intention of maybe going over so that I can work out this one segment that I know I'm about to tell that I know is longer than three minutes, give me a break, dude. 
So I said, doing three minutes. It was three minutes, bro. I sign up last. I end up. That's like one joke. I, on the, yeah. On the list. It's not even one for me. Yeah. It, like my jokes are too long. Like I'm a storyteller first and foremost. So like, I'm not just going to go up there and tap dance for you and take my hat off. That's like a uh, kill Tony. Yeah. Kind of like, shit. So you're basically putting me in the corner of like one liners that suck and that are going to get shitty laughs from people who come to the same open mic every week and are just satisfied with exactly that. Mm-hmm. Cool. I don't, I'm not upset with anybody who goes to these and like only goes to these and runs these circuits for 30 years. If that's what you want to do, do your thing. But I'm trying to get out of here. Yeah. So give me, (laughs) give me the last slot, please. However, when we go to pre-show meeting, I'm like third to last. So I go up to the host and I say, Hey bud, I'm working on a one man show. I'm trying to get um, a little bit more than three minutes. Is it possible that I can go last? Cause you know, after our open mic, like the bar is dead yeah. everywhere you go when it's done, everyone's just standing around talking for an hour, hour and a half. You could easily do more time. Oh yeah. So, uh, I didn't even get like the whole explanation as to like what I was trying to do out before he wrote me off and said, I don't have time to make accommodations or some shit like that. I get it. You're the host. I just showed up and asked for more time. That's crazy. Whatever, but I'm also not going to like... Do you know who that was? Yeah. You don't have to say it on here. You can tell yeah. me off camera. Yeah, yeah I okay. know who it was. So, uh, so I was upset about that interaction, and then I did my four and a half minutes. Mm-hmm. I was clapped off as if I had told the funniest joke in the whole world, and I did not tell one. So that pissed me off, because I was like, that's not what I just did, and your energy is like, I don't know what you're doing. Same right person? Now. Yes. Okay. And I get I get clapped off all the time. I get clapped off on every fucking open mic that I go to, so I'm not offended by getting clapped off. What does I that mean? It. So like you're going over your time, and then the host just like finds if you have a beat, they're gonna oh, they're gonna go in. they're okay. gone they're taking you off, right? So, yeah, because normally they'll flash a light at you. Right. So I got the light. I saw the light. I knew where where I, where I was in the story. I knew how much I had left. What I was trying to tell. I got to. Um, the last beat and then he clapped me off Mm. but i had a line at the end to deliver and it was the whole punchline it was four and a half minutes of me making you feel weird just to give you this one punchline Mm -hmm. and he clapped me off so i hand him the mic i go out the back i'm not pleased not just that i don't mind that i got like i said i get clapped off all the time it's not an issue i go along that's my thing whatever hate me for it but he went up like I had said the funniest fucking thing he'd ever heard. And it wasn't. So, like, don't do that. That's weird. Right. Like, everybody in the room was like, I had them in the palm of my hand. And you were like, yeah. And it's like, dude, give me a break. You're just so, being a dickhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get it. Like, he's mad because I'm going long or whatever. But, like, again, I asked to go last so that I could do this. And you told me to fuck off. So, like, I'm just going to get my time. Mm. And maybe not come back. Um. And that's pretty much what happened. So I I walk out. I'm upset because I know that I'm about to deliver the punchline that everybody's waiting for. I want to make a couple laps outside in the back. And then I'm like, no, I'm going to go tell him. So I go back in and I say, hey, dude, you gave me one more fucking beat. This is what I was going to say. And then I guess after that, he went and told all the henchmen that I came back in and like was upset with him. And then like I went back outside and I could just see the energy was like, completely changed as soon as I walked out. And, uh, and that's the thing about this bar is that that's kind of what it's always been. And I've known that. And I try not to go there for that very reason. I feel like it's one of the main like gatekeeping comedy clubs in new Orleans and new Orleans in and of itself is like historically really bad about gatekeeping. Like it's this, you're going to go see the same 12 guys every week, no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. Eight of them are funny as fuck. Four of them have no goals. And the other eight, like, don't have anyone to tell them how good they are. Typically. That's been my experience. So whenever, uh, then I I went back outside and I ran into this one guy who I came up with 12 years ago when I was doing stand up at La Nui right next door. Um, and I'm, we're kind of catching each other up and I'm telling him, Hey man, I'm working on this one man. And he's telling me about the poor man's copyright. And he's like, you don't have to get on copyright gov, dude. You just mail yourself the fucking thing. And I'm like, oh, you're teaching me workarounds. Mm-hmm. I know how I'm going to work around this. I'm going to document the entire thing on film, me in a monologue, talking about everything that this is going to be. And then no one can deny that this is my fucking idea. 
And that's what this documentary is. Yeah. Um, so uh, everyone was really upset that I went back and kind of told the host that like I didn't appreciate. Yeah, this is a, it's a small community. Defensive. Yeah, yeah. They're just really defensive of their boy and I get it. Like I'm, I am, I'm coming in new and fresh and like ruffling feathers. So like that's not ideal for anybody who's been doing this for like 10 years. They're kind of, I mean, I get it. It's like, who the fuck does this guy think he is? Um, but I think that's what you need to make it. You gotta, you gotta yeah, have that. And that's my point is that I know what this is, dude. Just give me one more beat. You know what I mean? What like, I'm saying, it's like, it's like Bill Burr and them. Like those guys, they had their little core group of comedians, but they were all over the country. It's mm-hmm. so like they were traveling, they're doing the thing. Um, if they were just sticking around one city, that's they what, never would have made it. That's what this city kind of is. And it's because there isn't a supportive enough community for comics. Mm-hmm. Like it's just open mics, right? Like there's, yeah. Rarely a show where you have like four people in a lineup that are killing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just don't think we have, and it's COVID. It's like all these things where like we're having to rebuild. Right. And I think another bar to, is, is like from my, from what I can tell and have perceived in my very short time, like back on the circuit is that like, this is the most, and La Nui was the same way. You know what I mean? It's just like, you can go there and fuck up and no one's gonna be mad at you. Yeah. Like some bars think that their open mic is a comedy show. I got news for you. It's not. It's not. But hopefully someone's going to do something on that stage that's different than last week. Because mm. 80% of these comics are going to come up and tell the same jokes. And I get it. Like, you got jokes that will kill anywhere. And sometimes it just feels good to get a laugh. Yeah. But I don't need, I don't feel like I need the audience to laugh at me to know where my shit's going to land. Because a lot of these audiences, too, are like random tourists or like people who are walking down the street, especially for uh, students who just like stumble in here at 1130 PM. They don't even know what this place is. Mm-hmm. And then they walk in on a, on a stand up set and they're the funniest fucking people in the room. Sometimes mm-hmm. like some of these kids will walk off the street, come up here, do a set and kill. And like people have that ability, but some, I don't know. My not experience tight. with new Orleans comedy has just not been like very welcoming i guess well no i see i'm glad you said that about the bar though uh, about this being a place you can fuck up yeah and no one's gonna get mad at you because i have noticed that about other places in new orleans so i'll go in there and i love having deep conversations mm-hmm. that we're having right now mm-hmm. and some of the things i end up getting in conversations with about get me in trouble mm-hmm. in a very oh, liberal people will place tell you to stop oh yeah they'll talking. tell me to stop and i'm yeah like, like the host doesn't like oh don't say that to this guy because he doesn't like that well this is not, not even you. on the mics this is just right. me oh, in I a know. bar talking I, to dude, people that's exactly what i'm talking yeah. about i've had those exact same conversations of oh if you say that around the wrong person you're not going to get any stage time so that was the whole point about this bar is like i wanted to make a space where you can come and talk about all the crazy shit that happens in life mm-hmm. but you leave all your ego at the door please thank you for doing yeah. that yeah and Jesus it's, it's worked out great and yeah. a lot of a lot of times like we don't even have to police it now yeah. because we have so many regulars that come here. Mm-hmm. The regulars police it for us. Mm-hmm. So if someone comes in here and they're acting an asshole, everyone comes together and kicks them out of the bar. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, people can't see it. Like, but I mean, it's like one of the coziest spots, especially here, like closer to campus when mm-hmm. everything else is like date rape central. Yeah. I've heard about some of those places over there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like of, of all the bars that you can come to, like in this area around campus, like, you guys are doing something that should be cherished and uh, thanks, attended. man. Yeah, and you you're doing something that should be cherished too. So, like, what's what's next for you, dude? I'm trying right. So, I'm going to uh, I'm doing a Q and A tour. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm doing a. This like is I'm going to show the film pertaining to the documentary. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to show the film and then do Q and A after with like people that I've served with mm-hmm. um, or people that I've known like my entire life to kind of speak on like, you know. First of all, I don't have to answer every GD question that comes out. I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to be the only person with a voice in this realm. Um, what I'm trying to do is bring people with me that I've served with that are that I know can speak on these things That'd well. Be cool. Yeah. Um, so that you know we're we're setting up a panel afterwards, and you get to ask us whatever you want. Um, oh, and, if any of those guys idea, want to come on here too, let me know. Yeah, for sure, dude. Um, so the idea is that like you're going to get it from all of us, not just me. Like once you see the film, like I'm in your head. So anything I say at this Q&A is going to get it's not going to be looked at objectively because you have already seen the film. You're in the emotional space of like you're worried about me. So I can say whatever I want at these Q&As. Most likely this is what all my reasoning and bringing people with me, though, is one to give me relief 
because I don't want to answer all those questions. I want to be able to say, well, I can't speak on that. Maybe so, so and so can. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's, that's next. I'm, I'm, I have timelines worked out with the Monterey International School of Studies in California to show it there and at Nichols State University through their uh, history department. But I don't know when exactly those are going to be. So like part of this is like the work that I'm doing is trying to figure all that on my own, which is exhausting and I don't enjoy it at all. You got social medias and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what's your what's social media? Is it um, you have one for the doc or do you have just I yours? I have so my YouTube channel is Stoned Pigman. S T O N E D P I G M A N. Um, but my, all my social media stuff is Mr. Mary Clarence, as in like Sister Mary Clarence from Sister Act, except it's just M R Mary Clarence. Mm-hmm. Um and I've been like putting out little teasers of shit here and there. Like, um, before I wasn't sure, like there, there's just parts of the one man show or like parts of it that I've already workshop that I know are hard to get through that I am not going to want to do every single night. Um, so right now I'm working on tightening up the one man show in a way that like, if I'm feeling it one night, I can be intense. If I'm not, if I, if I'm not in the headspace to do that, I can still give you a show that will be appreciated and like you feel like you got your money's worth for Mm -hmm. um that's that's being a performer right there baby yeah 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 yeah. i don't want to put myself in a box where i have to be uncomfortable every single night so for a while like i was considering like not doing the one-man show at all because i was like i've already been doing it and it's exhausting and it's hard but i realized what was making it even harder was the fact that everybody wouldn't leave me alone Mm. um but I appreciate it, guys, because I got a whole award-winning film out of it. Yeah, and, man. I, and and whatever, dude. I said that. I sound like a no. I mean, I it's you got it. You got to have that mentality to make yeah, it happen. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's the clarity that I'm having now at 31 is that like I've known this about myself. It's just only taking me getting out of the way and going and doing it. Um, well, and then if you keep saying that about yourself, it's going to make the people that have small minds get the fuck out of your way. They're going to get upset, and they're going to go yeah. uh, away from you. Well, part of your work is is, is not being upset by that because they aren't capable, right? Like, even That's, if you try to keep them in the circle, they're going to want to help you in ways that they're capable of, but they're not. it's not going to be what you need. It's going to be what they need or what they need from somebody else. So they're, like, going to project whatever they're – insecurities Needs are yeah. yeah and insecurities from another person they're going to give that exactly to you and instead of listening to you and telling you you know or helping you get what it, what it is you, if it's space if it's time if it's a place to lay your fucking head you know like if i tell you that's what i need and then you turn around and say well maybe it's this though cool yeah i, I just stopped all listening veterans to people do, yeah like, i've just literally just stopped listening to people and like people i've so many friends now I've had to walk away from mm-hmm. just because whenever I, when I say something, I usually go and do it. Mm-hmm. And they, first of all, if they're telling me no, that I can't do it, then I go and do it. Then they get upset that I actually yeah, did it. So and it's like, this is just, it's weird. I don't need this energy in my life. I've noticed dude throughout when I'm trying to like market or like do pop up, I've been doing a lot of pop-up screenings mm-hmm. cause I don't want, I'd rather do a pop-up than like give you a scheduled date and then you not show up. Mm-hmm. So that's my shit. But like, that's how I'm getting around it is just like being like, Hey, uh, I'm about to be here with this shit or not saying anything at all. And I'll just watch it by myself if I have to, I've done that already. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, uh, I send it space for people to be in to like, let you be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good message, but now I look forward to seeing what you do with this film and uh, hopefully I can catch the one man show sometime too, if you're doing it around here. Yeah. I'm going to, um, I have a hard date of veterans day. Uh, and it really comes down to whether or not I'll be in Baton Rouge or New Orleans for it. All right, just so let me know. I'm yeah. just trying to fill seats. So I'll try to make my I'm, way. I rain from St. Francisville, which is north of Baton Rouge, so I feel more confident about getting butts in seats up there. Yeah. But uh, if And I'm also giving myself a pretty shitty timeline, too. I'm looking at two months from now. Literally, I mean, that's today. yeah, that's uh, you're I like people well, move fast. Too. That's, a, that's the thing, dude, that's part of Elon like, Musk thing. He's like, if you fucking if you wait, he's like, you go, hesitate, you're yeah. done, bro. Like, you're done. That's, that's how I feel. Like, I'm not letting any of this, I'm not just gonna be like, oh, let me keep posting all these laurels because I'm done. Yeah, I'm not done. I'm not even close to being done. The story's not over. I'm still living it every day. Like, there are still veteran 22 veterans a day kill themselves every fucking day, and the number's gonna go up. And it's because we're not doing what 
they're asking of us and helping to take care of them whenever they come back. And it's in these, and it's not, it's, it, we want to shove the service down everybody's throat so bad. And it's not, it's usually inner child shit. So like the whole time you're, you're trying to get help for this incident. That's very real, right? So you got blown up in Afghanistan. Now you got a TBI, like you need help, bro. But you're also still broken because, you know, your dad was emotionally abusive or whatever. You know what I mean? Like American culture is being upset about something at all times. So like our parent, I mean, it's we're getting away from it now, I think. But like growing up, you're just not you didn't have the slack that you have now. Or I know as I parent my kids, like they have way more slack than I did. Mm. And they should. They should. They're kids. They should have room to, and that's my whole point is that like everyone should be afforded the room to make mistakes and to grow and to eat shit every now and then if they want to eat shit or be wet with an umbrella if they want to be wet with an umbrella. Yeah, there there are definitely layers to to mental health game, and then going to the military and stuff just adds more more it's, on top of it. Yeah, it makes it it makes it just really easy, like I said, to take away from what I'm actually trying to say and just uh, qualify it with like, oh, that's your you had too many concussions, like that's why you're angry right now. Yeah. it's like nah, dude. You're you're tossing me around. And yeah, like there it. there are a lot of military um, vets that would agree with you, and I, I know some of these guys. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I would love to have some more of your people on, so Dude, so we, we can, can get more it. of their stories documented. Yeah, yeah. So um, I will. I've I've spoken to like half a dozen of the guys that I know that I can take with me, and they can like speak to this shit because that's also part of it too. I don't. I love everybody that I've served with, but some of us aren't as. Uh, they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it exactly. Yeah. So like, we'll my things like I'll go do that if that's what it takes for everybody to hopefully get a better perspective as to what it is we're asking for. Cause it's not what we're getting and it's just frustrating to continue to be forced to work the system. That's not working for you. See, that's, that's a good one. That's an American right there, problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's an American problem. That's not a veteran issue. That's not any, that's Western medicine. That's capitalism over healthcare. Yeah. You said it well, my friend. All right, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Bro. Thank you for coming it. in brother. Yeah.